And when you're out there in the rain, you want to know where that weather system came from. So you know, the thing is, we don't from... have, what we should be having is weather balloons up, aircraft up, yep. uh, real-time measurements so you can Google online and see a picture of the Earth. We should, have reports, we should have reports along coastal reporting centers along the coast, along the Midwest, along the mountain ranges, the highest levels of radiation before the radnet set down and turned off and actually took away their equipment was Boise, Idaho, and areas in Colorado. People say, Colorado, that's not near the coast. How come that was so high? Well, the mountains rake the moisture out. So if you're sitting in Colorado thinking, oh, those poor people in California, no, no, no. You're getting a heck of a lot more radiation there, and where it rains in the Midwest or on the East Coast or even way over in England or, e or Western Europe, if you get more rainfall, guess what? You're getting more radiation if, and this is a big if, if the radiation plume is concurrent with that. There's been days when it's rained here, and I don't detect anything. And there's other days when it's sunny, and I'm thinking, what the heck is going on? The radiation thing is spiking up to three times background. Uh, so you can't base it on, you can't taste it, you can't smell it, and you can't even predict that necessarily this particular rain cloud is going to be one bringing down radioisotopes. You can't. And nobody's reporting. The EPA aren't reporting. UC Berkeley uh, Nuclear Engineering isn't reporting. We need private contracted to universities that are going to report, and we don't, we fire them. We need to have international committees reporting at multiple nations, and we need them also checking the fish. They're finally saying now the Canadians are going to be te checking fish, and there's a fish company here in America to say they're going to report strontium and cesium. Really, I think people should walk up to the fish counter with their uh, their um, <laughs> Inspector Plus or Inspector EXP. And by the way, we're putting up a new link so people can get the entire catalog for uh, the uh, less EMF, which gives the radiation detectors. The oh, best great. ones, I think. And uh, I literally, I tell people, if it goes click, 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 then back away from the fish <laughs> counter. Don't walk away. Use some common sense. <laughs> back away, back away. But if it's not radioactive, it's cool. And again, remember, if you take a probiotic, uh, literally it's something Dr. Asaf Jurakovich did work on this 25 years ago, that just simply taking something as simple as a our living probiotic or living probiotic ultra chelates out 85% of strontium and cesium. And then this is the animal studies he did. So when you add other things like Nutritrala, Nutridine, other things, enzyme protections like Regenerax, Cell Detox, Glutathione, and Nutritrella, these are very unique. Uh, you can find other things like flavonoids and this and that, and they're going to help. And a, we call a radiation detox diet like the Japanese had after Fukushima, like miso soup and nori, etc. But make sure it's they not would, Japanese. Yeah, they went on a uh, macrobiotic diet, brown right. rice, miso soup, right. mari soy soup. I mean, a big they deal. need to make it home. Yeah, easy to do. Now, those are going to be somewhat helpful, but the Newton Red Line are eons beyond that. And I'll tell you why I know this. <clears throat> 1973, when I was working on my Ph.D. in marine molecular biology, I was also assisting my colleagues doing work on the cell biology department on an offshore U.S. military project to protect our troops and the American troops from radiation from a nuclear war so they could boots on the ground within two days of a nuclear war. And they did succeed in developing specific drugs and or nutraceuticals to block radiation damage. If they take my protocol, they'll cut out 98% of the effect of radiation. Wow. 98%. And I, that's what I'm saying. If you're over in Japan, uh, people need to not only have a, a bug out bag, but they should be bugged out already. But if you're in Japan, you better get out because they could have a hydrothermal volcanic explosion or an actual critical dirty bomb nuclear explosion there any day now. And if there's a level 7 earthquake, which is virtually guaranteed within the next six months, you're going to have cooling pool 4 and the whole place become a cauldron of death. 40 million people scrambling for the doors in Japan and a radiation cloud heading toward the whole Western world, which means all of your food outside growing will soon become radioactive. I mean, not just a little radioactive. I'm talking about, oh, my God, if I eat this, will I die radioactive? And people say, that can't happen in 2012. I say... I don't know if it will, but I can tell you, it sure as hell looks like it. It's like you're watching a building on fire and you're wondering if the timbers are going to fall on people's heads and you can hear cracking sounds. Well, if you're a firefighter and if you're an EMT emergency doctor like I've been, yeah, yeah, I can. And it will, in fact. It's just a matter of time. We don't know when it'll happen, but it will. Uh, and your comments on this, because this is important to people understand this is a time when we're having earth changes, super volcanoes, super earthquakes, extreme weather, and power blackouts, which also make these nuclear reactors much, much more dangerous, too. 
I just wanted to mention that if uh, people want to test their Inspector Plus or, or uh, the other one, the, you said it came with a probe. Yeah, the so Inspector that, uh, EXP is a little bit more expensive because it has a fancy probe. You can clip in the top of the Inspector, and you can move the probe right over things. It's really cool. When they go into the when they go into the grocery store, they can go up to the bananas and the uh, it, the inspector. It sh it should at that time uh, start beeping. Yeah, the reason is we, people don't realize that potassium is a is a is a radioisotope. That's right. It's potassium forty, and it's yeah. naturally occurring. Yeah, it's um, a naturally occurring isotope. So yeah, don't don't be freaked out by your radioactive bananas. Uh, it gives it's a very very weak uh, beta emitter. It's not going to kill you, and it's like I say, a little bit of radiation actually is not going to is not going to fry you. But certain radioisotope molecules. Now, I want to propose something else. Doctor Nikola Tesla actually proposed to uh, the the original team that discovered radioisotopes, Madame Curie, who was dying of radiation sickness back in the 1920s, and he told her he could make what's called a time dependent scalar frequency that would shatter the molecules based on their periodic table of elements and I have an idea how to do it <clears throat> to create what's called a what's called an ion molecular uh, atomic cyclotron resonance device and what you would do is you'd actually create an ion field that would literally shatter the non-radioactive part of the molecule away from the radioactive so it would speed up the rate of decay so a molecule like cesium that has a half-life of you know, what is it, uh, 42 years or something like that, ridiculous, or 50 years, it would uh, speed that half-life to be maybe six months or three months or two weeks. And you've got to do that because these isotopes are constantly coming out, but they're also salting the entire planet. We are literally seeing the embedding of radiation that's going to spoil the food supply and mutate animals and plants and organisms and likely produce super pathogens forever. We're not just talking about for a little while. This is a forever thing. This is, oh, my God. This is not a 2012 thing. This is like, a, you know, this the entire... This is the rest of your life and this is everybody rest, you know and this generations is the, to come. Yeah, this is for forever, forever. So, in other words, we need to think out of the box and think of great geniuses like Tesla say, look, oh, yeah, we can create a scalar frequency that would shatter it. Now, let's let's get into this issue of well, Earth changes. Uh, Robert... We're seeing some major changes in weather and extreme storms, snow, everything. And when we come back, we're going to hear all the latest on what's going on with the earth changes that are going to make a lot of the plans, as, as jo Robbie Burns used to say, the best laid plans of mice and men gain after glay, and in uh, Gaelic that means often go as... Hey, welcome back. Uh, Quick announcement, you want to make a warning, uh, Trace, about food, buying fish or going out and eating publicly. Uh, then we're going to hear from uh, Robert about the latest on um, what's happening with volcanoes, etc., which are triggering off and moving us toward an ice age. Yes, I just want to tell the list listeners to be careful, especially when they're at a buffet where they can't control who ordered the food, where the food came from. There's a sales, if you will, wholesale of Asian fish. I, I was wonder. recently... Yes. Now, by the way, don't assume if your relatives are in South Korea or China that they're safe because the radiation level within a week was detected over China, over 22 provinces, and the waters carry radioactive water toward the Chinese waters of the South China Sea. So the entire area, including the Philippines, if you're buying, let's say, seaweed, which is real popular in America or other Western countries, uh, a lot of the seaweed is getting progressively more radioactive, and they did testing off... UC Irvine did testing in Orange County of seaweed, and they found the seaweed off California is becoming significantly more radioactive. <sighs> so, yeah, so people yeah. need to understand that, that in the South China Sea, the Philippines, even the Nori in uh, the South Island of Japan, the radiation levels are double of radioiodine-131 and strontium-90 uh, than they were in say 137 than they were last year, uh, March, March 11, 2011. So what's going to happen is <coughs> the black current will carry that radiation around the Earth in two and a half years, and every ocean on Earth will be laced with plutonium and radioisotopes, every single ocean. Two and a half years. So in another year and a half, which means 2013, there is not an ocean on Earth that will not have some residual radioactivity from Fukushima. 
I saw something really scary on the news bite was that uh, they were looking at the trash that was coming, the radioactive trash that was coming into British Columbia off the, uh, from Japan, you know, that big uh, pile of wood and everything else. Yeah. And they had, they had a, they did have a radiation meter, but they had no protective clothing at all. Right, right. And, and so I don't know what they were thinking because if the meter starts clicking, I mean, what are they going to do? Pick the thing where, up? Where were they moving the trash, by the way? Excuse me. Where were they moving that trash? Well, they they weren't moving it. They were they were trying to decide what they were going to do with it. I mean, it's yeah. such a huge. Well, they're moving amount it of... all over. They're moving it all over Japan. I use the joke of I call Fukushima way. It's a new product. You know, the tagline is wipes away rumors. Rumors that your part of Japan is non-radioactive, so they want to be good Japanese citizens by shipping the radioactive waste and not only poisoning their own country, so nobody can be arrogant to say this part of Japan is nice for your little kids to kind of move to. No, no, we're going to make the entire northern hemisphere radioactive by literally burning at high temperature, 2,000 plus degrees, 150 million plus tons of radioactive debris, and re-inject it into the troposphere so you in Europe and Canada and America, you can't get arrogant either. It's Fukushima way, wipes away any rumors that you're less radioactive. How's that? Well, you're talking about this uh, radioactivity, and, and I'll lead into that, too. But there's a, there are growing fears that there's a huge volcano in North Korea that could soon erupt. Now, there's a geologist at uh, Pusan National University who thinks Mount Baekdu, I hope I'm pronouncing that r correctly, could erupt soon. And this Mount Baekdu is huge. It's the highest mountain on the Korean peninsula, and it, it last erupted in 1702. There's a, a ge geological expert in Korea says it could erupt in 2014, 2015. If it erupts, it could be 10 to 100 times greater than, than the April 2010 eruptions in Iceland that shut down the, the uh, airspace over Europe. The, it it uh, had one of the l largest known eruptions in the past 10 years, 10,000 well, years. We need to start literally getting ready for Earth changes that are going to be so cataclysmic that any nuclear reactors near them, we know that the five nuclear reactors in Switzerland, for example, are sitting on or within a five-mile strike zone of a major earthquake fault line. Did you know that, well, Teresa? All of, the, all of the reactors in Switzerland, so the Swiss are not stupid. They say, we're out of here. We're not doing nuclear. The only problem, the only problem is that they say, "Oh, it's going to take us to 2025 or 2032." Swiss, you got the right idea, but you don't have the right gear. In other words, you're not doing what we call the speed of the flash. If you don't get rid of these nuclear reactors and radioisotopes sitting on fault lines when the Earth starts to shake and rattle and roll, if you don't get these nuclear reactors off the San Andreas fault line zone, like the Diablo Canyon up near the literally Indian burial ground, Diablo Canyon or you don't get rid of the New Madrid fault nuclear reactors and switch them to natural gas, we're screwed. And we're talking about radiation literally from 504 plus reactors. The Chinese in a, just a couple of years put 35 reactors in with the Queen and Rio Tinto mines and Carlisle Group, which is owned partially by the Rothschilds and former President George Bush, etc., and all the other global maniacs. They plan to build 500 nuclear reactors in China in the next five years. 500. There's also <clears throat> nuclear reactors that are within range, uh, quite a few of them apparently, within range of this, uh, this Mount Baekdu in Korea. <clears throat> and uh -huh. this, this mountain erupts on average every 1,000 years with a huge eruption. It has smaller eruptions in between time, but a huge eruption about every 1,000 years. And guess what? The last eruption was approximately 1,000 A.D. So it is... It is due, and if it happens, it could be 50 times stronger than when Mount Vesuvius buried and destroyed Pompeii. So okay. we're talking about a huge, huge volcano that is within range of those nuclear reactors that you're talking about. Uh, 